So cyclohexanes chair conformation. What is really behind this? Well, you know, in chemistry, uh, having a molecule, you know, so I'll give you a perfect example, propane, right? It so happens that you could actually, you know, take these two end endpoints and kind of, you know, you know, flip it around to give you that triangle, right? Which will give you that cyclic molecule cyclopropane, right? What that does is that actually deviates from bond angles. And so it's the same thing with cyclohexane. Cyclohexane rather have a perfect 109.5, you know, bond angles. So what it does is that it adopts the chair conformation to give it that to satisfy that, you know, that th those th those sort of bond angles that you prefer. Now, this is not cutting it because here we have, you know, something that is called ring strain, which is which which is bad, right? It is caused by bond angles being forced, kind of like this propane being forced, right? Cyclopropane being forced, right? So that is that is bad. So that so they adopt what is called, you know, chair conformation. So here's the deal with chair conformations. There's a bunch of carbon here just bonded to two hydrogens per piece. So here's a you know how you, here's how you draw this regular chair conformation of cyclohexane, just pure cyclohexane. Just a series of parallel lines. So I'm gonna use a ruler because I want to make everything a little bit neat since I'm illustrating here. So the first thing you want to do is draw two parallel uh, two parallel lines that offset each other. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, there's one here. All right, I'm going to draw another one that is kind of a little bit off of that, all right? So that's the first one. Now, every molecule has two chair conformations, so this is the first one. So after that, I'm just going to pick either side. So one on the top comes down, all right? One on the top comes down, all right? One on the bottom goes up, all right? And then all I'm going to do is just connect the dots. So this will go here. And this will go here. So that is the first one. The other one, all I'm doing now is just rotating. All I'm doing now is just rotating. So these parallel lines were, these parallel lines were you know, coming down like this. I'm going to make these over here just like this now. Offset from each other. Alright. I'm hoping these come out perfect. It's gonna kinda be a little pain in the ass to kinda get perfect. Alright. And then again, one comes from the bottom. One comes from the bottom. Uh one comes down from the top. Alright, and then all I do is just connect my dots, connect the points. So you should have two things that look something of similar shape of something like this. So with chair conformations, you have what is called the axial and you have what is called the equatorial, right? Just different bond angles, right? So here's how it go, all right? If your axial is going up, your equatorial will be going down. It's always opposite. So the axial looks something like this. So I'm out. So here's the deal. I always count this as my carbon one. So in carbon one, I have an axial going up. All right. On carbon two, it has to be going down. They just basically alternate as you go around. So up, down. So since this one is going down, this one has to go up. Since this is going up, this one has to go down. Since this one is going down, this one has to go up. Since this one is going up, this one has to go down. Now those are my axials. My equatorials will be the one on the side. So, starting from carbon one, my axial is going up, my equatorial has to go come down. Carbon two, my axial is going down, my equatorial has to come up. Carbon three, my axial is going up, my equatorial has to come down. Carbon four, my equatorial, my axial is going down, my equatorial has to come up. Carbon four, 
Yeah. Well, carbon. Carbon, carbon one, two, three, four. Carbon five. I apologize. On carbon five, the axial is the axial is going up, so the equatorial has to come down. And then carbon six, the axial is coming down, so the equatorial has to come up. So that will be the first year confirmation. And again, all you do in the second one is doing the same thing. So the axial comes up in carbon one. Axial goes down. Comes up, down, up, down. All right, and then all I do is just take the opposite of my equatorial. So my axial is going up up here, so my equatorial has to come down. My axial is going down here, so my equatorial has to come up. My axial is going up here, so my equatorial has to come down. My, equi my axial is going down, my equatorial has to come up. My axial is going up, my equatorial has to come down. My axial is going down, my equatorial has to come up. And this will be the chair confirmation of cyclo pure cyclohexane. Let's look at a little bit more difficult one. How about this? We have a tert butyl on carbon one and a methyl group on carbon one, two, three, four, and carbon four. So let's draw the chair conformation of this molecule. Use a different paper here. Well, I might as well use the same. Well, let's use a different one. So now, it will be helpful to know that this is actually cis. They're both on the same side. So when you draw your conformation, they should both be on the same side. So, starting with a series of parallel lines, you know, I could just go like this. Alright, and then just gonna draw a line from the top. One comes down from the bottom, or well, one goes down. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? And then all I do is just connect the lines, connect the lines. So this will be the original, and then we're going to draw the flip. Well, these parallel lines are coming like this, so therefore these has to go like that. These, they have to go like that. So I'm going to have one here. I'm going to have one here to kind of offset it. So one comes down from the bottom. One comes down from the top. Well, one comes up from the bottom. One comes down from the bottom. From the, from the top. Mm -hmm. Then all I do is just connect these. So this will be my perfect flip. Now, here's the deal. With non hydrogen, with non hydrogen uh, compounds, right? With non hydrogen, you know, compounds, when you do the flip, they have to be on the same side. So, one thing with cis, when you have something cis, that means it's coming out at us, which means that they're actually going up, right? You could also picture them as actually being up. So on carbon one, I always count this as my carbon one. On carbon one, I'm going to have this tert butyl, which seems as if it's it seems as if it's going up or coming out at us. So I'm going to have it on this axial here. Right, so it's coming up. Right, I'm gonna have since this axial is going up, my equatorial has to come down. So this is carbon one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna count counterclockwise in the first one and then clockwise in another one. So since this is my carbon one, this will be carbon one, two, uh, three, four. So that will be my carbon four. So I'm counting counterclockwise in the first one. So on carbon four, we also have a methyl, but it's on the same side as my cis, as, as my terbutyl group. So if my terbutyl group is coming up, my methyl, if it's on the same side, has to be up. Well, my equatorial will be, well, my axial will be coming down on carbon four, right? So that means my methyl group 
If it's coming, if, if, if this is coming down on carbon four, which is a hydrogen, that means my methyl group, which is going up, will be right here. Right? Because remember, they're on the same side. My terbutyl is going up, so therefore my methyl has to go up. Right? My axial is going down here. Right? My axial is going down here, so that means my methyl has to be on the equatorial side. So that will be a first flip, uh, first confirmation. Now, how do you do the flip? Well, non hydrogen groups, they have to stay on the same side when you do the flip. So when I flip the molecule, this, which is carbon wall, which this which is carbon one, this now will be my carbon one. So this now will be my carbon one. I'm going to count, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, counterclockwise. Well, the first one I count clockwise. I'm sorry about that. So I counted clockwise the first one. This one I'm going to count counterclockwise. So notice that my carbon one moved from here to here. And that is just a general thing I do for every chair confirmation that I do. Um, it will be su super helpful. So again, my carbon one is here, but doing the flip, it will become here. Now, notice that my terbutyl group is going up, right? Well, the axial is going down, so that means my equatorial has to be going up. So here, so this is where my terbutyl group will actually be now, right? Because it has to be going up on the flip. It has to be going up here. It's going up, but here the axial is going down. So it cannot be on axial. It has to be an equatorial, which is going up. So counting counterclockwise. Now this is one, two, three, four. So on carbon four, there is the methyl group. Well, the methyl group is actually going up. So therefore the methyl group will actually be on the equatorial side now. And then there's just a plain old hydrogen, which you could fill in. All right, the hydrogen will be going down, um, and the methyl group will also be going up. And this will be the chair confirmation of, 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 of this compound here.